Corporate Finance Presentation Using OneNote Bond Coupon Rate, Current Yield, and Yield to Maturity Comparison Get ready, it's time to take your chance with Corporate Finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon on the left-hand side in the practice problems, then down in the 1614 bond coupon rate, current yield, and yield to maturity comparison tab. Also note when using OneNote, look at the immersive reader tool. Our presentations up top will be in the text areas down below. Same name, same number, What? but with transcripts transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them closing the icon information is going to be up top we're going to go through the calculations on down below we're going to be calculating the bond coupon rate the current yield the yield to maturity the the current yield is going to be a performance type of measure that's more simplified we're going to compare and contrast that to the yield to maturity as we take a look at bond a and bond B and do a comparison between the two of them. The yield to, cur to maturity is basically the market rate you can think of it as. We have looked at that in prior sections where we focused in on the calculation of yield to maturity in more detail. If you want to look at that where we go through it a little bit slower, you can take a look at the prior section where we're focusing on general calculations of the bond in general. Also note that if you're looking for present value calculations where you want to see them in more than just one format, such as the Excel calculation format, take a look at a prior section where we focus in on present value calculations. Here, we will be looking at the uh, yield to maturity estimate calculations, which is also something a little bit new here for them as well as we do our comparison. So bond A, we're gonna say has a par value of 1000 annual interest payment, 100 market price, 870 matures in years or years to maturity 10 versus bond B has a par value of 1000 annual interest payment 80 market price 800 matures in years or years to maturity 4. You'll notice the difference between these two we have a big difference in terms of when they will be maturing at the 10 versus 4. Now that's going to be significant. That's one factor that can be significant when we're doing a comparison between our, our two kind of formats that we might be using to calculate performance, the current yield, focusing in on the annual kind of return versus the yield to maturity, which is taking into consideration the longer term perspective. One of the things to consider when you're looking at those two is the, the yield to maturity will take into consideration the fact that this end point, the 1000 that we expect to get at the end of the of the 10 years in this case and the four years in this case is going to be valued differently uh, when it's further or longer out into the distance. So if it's 10 years out, in other words, the 1000 that would be received at the end is going to be worth less in current year dollars versus the 1000 down here, which would only be four years out. That is not going to be really picked up when we do the calculation for the current yield but should be when we do the yield to maturity, which could give us different results when we're looking at basically performance measures, yield to maturity typically being the one that would be more accurate uh, when you're looking at the full scope of the investment. So we have the coupon rate would be calculated. We're just looking at A first of all, that would be the 100 annual interest payment compared to or divided by the power value. 1000 would give us the 10%. So obviously we can divide that out 100 divided by 1000 point or what happened there 100 divided by 1000 is 0.1 or 10% the current yield then this is our performance calculation the straightforward or easier kind of calculation would be the annual interest payment meaning the amount of return we would expect to get for the price the price being the 870 for bond A that then giving us the 11.49 so that's going to be the 100 divided by the 870 the about 11.49 if we move the decimal two places over for the percentage now still concentrating in on a we're going to do the uh, yield to maturity calculation we'll do this in a couple different ways the first way i think is the most intuitive type of way that uh, we could do more easily basically in an excel type of format we'll kind of focus in on the process here and then we'll do a rate function calculation and then we'll do the new thing which is the approximations in these two kind of ways for approximate calculations you might see in a textbook 
if they're trying to take away, say, your calculator in particular, for example. So the first one, we're going to do a, a goal seek type of, of calculation. Normally, I think it's useful to understand and put your thought process on anytime you think about these bonds for the calculation of the market price. Now, here we have the market price. That's going to be the 870. But and what we don't have is the is the market rate. But if you put it in this format, that'll help you to kind of figure it in your mind. That's how most people, I think, will see it. And even once you calculate the rate, it's useful to then plug it back into this format to double check that you have the proper answer. So usually you would take the present value of interest calculation. That, that would be the annuity related to the interest for the time period, meaning that would be the interest here of the $100 for the 10 years and present value it. And then you'd have to present value the value of one. That would be the $1,000 that you would present value at the market rate for the 10 years. Now, if we don't know what the rate is, we could guess the rate using goal seek and then adjust the calculation. This being easier to do once again in Excel. And we have it done in Excel if you want to practice in there uh, by then changing this until we get to the end line number to be what we know it should be. Meaning we'll do the calculations for the present value. The pre these two present value calculations getting to the market price and then we will adjust the market price uh, the rate until we get the market price to what we need it to be being the 870 that's the first way we'll take a look at this so the answer is going to be this 12.33 on the rate but again we could imagine starting out with this being at like 10 percent or something like that then we'll do the present value calculation we'll do this just looking at an excel formula here you could look at present value calculations uh, in different formats, tables and formulas in prior sections. That would be the present value of the rate. That would be this number, which we could start off guessing, comma, number of periods. The number of periods would be 10, comma, the payment, which would be the interest payment, which in this case was 100, would give us the 557. Then the present value of the 1000, bringing that back, would be the present value of the rate. The rate being this 12% that we're guessing, comma, number of periods, which would be 10. And then comma, comma, because it's not a annuity, but uh, present value of 1. Then we pick up the 1,000 that we'll bring all the way back. That being the 313. Adding those two up, we get to the 870. So even if we, if we were guessing what the rate is and it was something other than the answer, like 10%, then we can adjust this rate given it's going to be part of these two calculations and they'll be connected. And then we can adjust this rate and ask Excel, please change this rate to whatever it needs to be in order to get to the end result of 870, which would be the answer. That's one way that we can basically uh, think about this and work through this. And I think it's an intuitive way. And it's also a way that you want to double check your numbers no matter how you do the calculation and you would double check them by plugging your numbers back into a calculation such as this. We also have the rate function that you can use in Excel looking like this. The rate equals the number of periods. The number of periods would be 10. Then we have comma, the payment. This number needs to be negative in the formula. So the payment would be a negative 100 in this case and then comma, and then we've got the present value. The present value would be the price or the 870. And then we got the future value. The future value would be the 1000. It also has to be negative. So you got to be careful with that when you do this formula, comma, and then zero, I believe means it's going to be at the end of the period, which you're calculating end of the period. So that's going to be what the zero stands for. And that too would give you the 12.33 and then once you get this number, if you did it with the rate function, I would still do this calculation up top, plugging it back in as we did here to double check that you get back to the 870. That would be a common type of check, one that I would recommend doing. Now we're going to do kind of a new thing down here. We'll do the calculation with our formula. We'll do it two kind of ways. Uh, we'll do it with this one. There's two kind of variants you might see on this. You might be asked to do this again in a test question situation where they don't give you a computer or a calculator possibly. And that would be the coupon plus the F minus the P, which is face value minus the price over N, which is going to be the years to maturity over the F plus P, which is the face value plus the price divided by two. This second part, this uh, we're going to change that a little bit, which is, makes it a little bit more accurate first off, and then we'll we'll do this calculation too so you can see it done 
both ways, two ways you might see it in basically a book type problem. So we have the annual interest payments. Also note, I'm going to break this out into a table type of format. I'm not going to write it out in the formula. And that is useful in practice, I believe. If you can take something like this and put it into a table, then I think that's going to be a useful exercise for you to do. It might help you to visualize it a couple different ways. Clearly, you could put this stuff into this formula and work it algebraically as well. Notice if you have a table, you want to put the numerator and the denominator, I would like to end up in the outer column. So I'm going to start with the numerator. I'm going to have that C, which is going to be the coupon rate. I'm going to put that up top here, not in the outer column, because that's where I would like the whole numerator to be. And then I'm going to go inside and take the par value, put the mark plus the market price. That's going to be F minus P here. Or I'm sorry, minus the par value minus the price, F minus P. That's going to give us the 130. Take that divided by the number of periods, which is this N, 10. And so the 130 minus the 10 gives us 13. Now we have the C plus this whole thing. I'm going to add that up. That'll give us the numerator, which I'll put into the outer column. Now I'm going to do the second half. This one, I'm going to take a variation from this formula. And that's going to make it a little bit more accurate in this case. And you might see this in another book, some book problems. And then we'll get to this variant uh, to see the difference between the two. So this is deviating a little bit. Market price, 870 times 0.6. That's going to give us the 522. And then we'll take the par value, the 1,000 times the 0.4. So the 0.6 and the 0.4 for the market price versus the par value. That's going to give us the 400. The 522 and the 400 will then give us the denominator of the 922 uh, about. Then we can divide those out. Dividing those out, we're going to get the 113 divided by the 922 gives us about 12.26 about. So that's close. Notice it's not exact to the 12.33 we got when we did the actual calculation in Excel. Let's do it one more time. We'll do this calculation again. Numerator the same, denominator slightly different. So the numerator the same, annual interest payments to 100, par value minus the market price, 130 matures in years 10. 130 divided by 10 is the 13. The 100 and the 13 gives us the 113. The denominator now being F plus P divided by 2. That's going to be the market price plus the par value adding up to 81870. Taking that divided by 2 will give us the denominator this time, the 935. And that then, if we calculate that out, we get the 113 divided by the 935 about. We get the 12.09 about. So notice it's a little less exact than what we got from the prior approximation. Okay. So now we'll go to B here. We're going to do the same thing for B, coupon rate. Coupon rate for B, where we have the par value 1,000, annual interest payment 80, market price 800, matures in four years. We have the annual interest 80 compared to the par value, which is 1,000. That'll give us the coupon rate of 8%. Then we've got the current yield. This is our performance type calculation. We've got the 80 divided by the 80 being what we think this, the return will be divided by the market price, what we expect to pay for it, gives us the annual kind of return or the current yield of the 10%. Now that 10%, if you compare it up top to what we got way up here, which was uh, the 11%, the 11% is higher up top here, you can see for A to B. So you'd say the current yield is better for A than to B. But uh, let's now then calculate the, the next component, and and uh, and we would want to do that, you know, if if we have something that's this different in terms of the maturity dates, uh, in in effect, the four convert compared to I believe the other one was ten years. So now let's go and calculate the uh, yield to maturity. We could do this a couple different ways. We'll do the goal seek idea first again, and we would imagine that we had the actual rate, which is kind of like the market rate and then do our calculations with that and then adjust the market rate if it were in Excel using goal seek. So we have the present value of the interest payments plus the present value of the, of the par value and that would give us the market price given some number. This happens to be the answer, but we can start with something like 10%, right? We got the present value of the interest uh, would be here. Calculation would be the present value of the rate the rate would be this one that we would first start off guessing on. Number of periods, comma, number of periods. This time it is four. And then the payment is going to be 80. 80, I mean, yeah, 80 on the payment. So this is the annuity component. And that, and then that'll give us the 228. 
and then we'll take the uh, present value of the rate we're going to take back this 1000 now the rate once again this number comma number of periods four comma comma because it's not an annuity but present value of one future value the 1000 bringing it back we get the 572 adding those two up we then get to the 800 this is the answer the 800 which we already knew here uh, note the what was the unknown would be the this percent and if we guessed it to be 10 percent then we can ask excel to change this percent to be what we need it to be in order for the end result to be the market price of the 800. this is useful to know so you can use the goal seek so you can kind of do this as you would apply the concept of algebra looking for the unknown number in essence while still using kind of a function and it's also what i would do even if you use some other method to get to the rate to double check that you have the right answer so for example you could use the rate formula which would be equals the rate number of periods number of periods for and then the payment the payment would be 80 comma the present value has to be negative so be careful on that present value would be the 800 or price comma future value the future value would be the 1000 at the end of the time period comma and the type would be zero meaning it's going to be paid at the end of the time period that gives us once again the 15.01 if you did it that way note again I would then use that number as we did up top to do this calculation to double check that you get to the proper price now that 15.01 if I compare that to what we got up in the last calculation way up here which was 12 notice that uh, this time the second you know b is higher and so there's kind of that difference between the two performance calculations and you can see that don't due to in the timing differences between a and b so if you're if you're just comparing the return on an annual basis to to the price you're not taking into consideration this par value that you're going to get back at a later point and if you have two very different maturity dates this one's going to be worth a, a lot less because you're not going to get it until 10 years and this one is four years out so you can see how that that difference in the calculations could be there and and possibly when it would be more of a substantial impact on your calculation now let's do this one again we'll just calculate this again with our with our approximation formulas and and these are something that you might see in, in book questions they might take your calculator away and make you do it like this so we'll do this a couple different ways again formatting our table uh, it's really good practice to try to take something complex like this and put it in the table so i would practice that we got the annual interest payment that's going to be the coupon rate or interest was 80. we then have the par value i'm um, then on f minus p which is the par value minus the market price that's going to give us the 200 so now we did this component we're going to take that, divide it by the number of periods N, which is 4. 200 divided by 4 is 50. Now we have the top point, C plus this whole thing. We have the 80 plus the 50 being the numerator at the 130. And then we got the denominator. We're going to do our slight variant. We're not going to do it this way. We'll do it this way in the second one. Slight variant, which is a slightly more accurate than in, in the examples we have here. You might see it either way in a book problem. So it's good to take a look at both of them. We got the 800 times 0. 0.6, which is the market price times 0. 0.6 is the 480. And then the 1000 times 0. 0.4, par value times 0. 0.4, the 60 and the 40 add into, you know, 100. And that will give you the 400. So the 8. 480 and the 400 gives you 880 compared to the 130 to the 880 pulling out the trusty calc we're going to say trusty calc 130 divided by 880 gives us about the 14.77 let's do it one more time this time the alteration on the bottom will keep it the way it should be or keep it the way it is showing here f plus p so we're going to say and divided by two so we got the annual interest payment that's the same 80 and then we've got the uh, par value of 1000 minus the market price 800 gives us 200 matures in years four 200 divided by four is going to give us the 50 the 80 plus the 50 is the 130 same up to that point the denominator then is going to be the market price plus the par value gives us the 1800 and then divided by two and that'll give us the 900 so then we take the 130 divided by the 900, pulling out the trusty calc, 130 divided by 900, about 14.44%. So you can see this is an approximation. 
a little bit different than this approximation, which is a little bit different than the accurate number, which is the 